Hello and welcome to The Main Cave. Now in today's video, I'm going to be running through 19 of my accessory picks for the ROG Ally with, at the end, one bonus accessory. And I want you to comment if you think that I've missed anything out on my list, is there anything worth picking up? And what's your number one for accessories for the Ally? Everything I've bought in this list, you can find links to down in the description below. So if you're new here, we do make regular videos on technology for your smart home and for gaming. So please do consider subscribing as we may make a video to make your life easier and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So do hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Now, first up on the list is a battery power bank. Running this machine will draw power, a lot of power. So much so, if you want to run AAA titles, the best you can get is maybe only an hour or so, probably a little bit more. But don't let this stop you. Just buy a battery bank and you'll be able to game for longer. I've gone for this one. This is the Basius 30,000 mAh 65 watt brick. Now when I'm choosing a power bank, I look for three things, capacity, power, and physical size. For the best charging experience on the Ally, make sure your power bank outputs at least 65 watts, which this one does. Next, it needs to have a decent amount stored up and this one has 30,000 mAh, which means from flat, you can charge the Ally up to 100% twice. Also, it is quite a slim form factor, which means it's perfect for slipping into a travel case if you need it. Another shout out is for the Anker 737, which is very popular as it's very powerful and can run the Ally at a 30 watts turbo mode, no problem. It's just, it's a little bit more expensive than this basis. Next up is a quick one, it's a screen protector. Now there aren't many out at the moment, so for me I just chose one that was available on Amazon. In fact, that's a lie, this is my third one, as the two previous didn't fit. This one is still a couple of millimetres short, but it's better than the last two, and something is better than nothing. This, along with what's up at number four, will probably need to be picked up later down the line, as when more become available. I'll probably get a dbrand one, as they seem to fit perfectly. Third is what I consider to be essential, and that's a memory card. Feel free to go as large as your budget stretches, but I'd say a minimum is 512 gigabytes. I've gone for one terabyte, as it was on sale at Amazon. The faster the memory card, the better, but the A3 should be good enough to store some games, or as I'm doing, to store emulation files and the old Steam game. Next up is a case. Now here's the thing, same as the screen protectors, at the time of recording, there is only a couple of cases that you can get in the UK that's made specifically for the Ally. One case you can get is this, this is the official case, which I bought from Curry's. Now I've bought four other cases from Amazon that state they fit the Ally, and although that may be true, they aren't a great fit. Either too tight, too loose, or the middle flap presses against the sticks too much. So right now, if you want a well-fitting case, the official one is a good option, but I guarantee more will come out if you don't want to spend the money on it. The official case, it looks okay and it has decent padding on the sides. It's decent enough quality material. It has a nice slim storage pouch. The zip feels premium and it also doubles as a stand. Problems are, you can't take much more than the Ally on a small cable in it. And also there's not much protection along the zip. I paid 20 pounds from Curry's in the UK for it and I'm going away soon. I'll most likely take this case with me. Being a Windows machine, take your pick for audio. But for me, I went for the on-brand with the official ROG Cetra earbuds. By all means, use your AirPods, or if docked, any USB-connected headphones will do. But as for the Cetras, I have to say, I'm impressed. I've been using them since day one, and they're comfy, they sound good, have good enough battery, and there's no discernible lag when in gaming mode. Plus, they match the Ally's aesthetics, which is never a bad thing. They live in this AirPod-style case to charge and connect to the Ally lightning fast, and they cost me £60 from Amazon, but you may be able to find them in the deal at some point. So what about docking this to a TV or monitor? Well, there's been a lot of chat on Reddit and Discord about third-party docks and the elusive 30-watt turbo mode. If you want to get the full power of the Ally while docked, you need to be seeing 30-watt turbo in the command center, and when people have been using some third-party docks, it hasn't quite been working as well. It's down to a few factors, but firmware issues may be one. Only time will tell. Fortunately for me, I have a dock here which paired with a Ugreen 100 watt plug. I get the 30 watts turbo. It's from Kiwi Home, and I'll link to it once it's released in the future as it's not quite out yet. Another option if you want to get the 30 watts turbo, you can't go wrong with the official dock, it just works. 
Only downside is that it doesn't hold the Ally app on your desk. So you may need to get a desk stand as well, which I'll talk about later. Also, it really only has one USB and HDMI. Now, if you are using the official charging dock and you want it stood up on a desk, you could use the cardboard piece ROG kindly provide. But if you want more than that to last a little bit longer, then here's a few to consider. Firstly, a cheap Amazon plastic one made for the Steam Deck. It works fine. Also, this is a more robust one from JSOX, although I don't really like the massive logo on the front, so I'll probably cover it up with something at some point. Next up is something really useful for someone using the official charging dock, and that's a 90 degree USB port, meaning if you're plugging a USB cable, it doesn't protrude pointing right out of the top, it goes backwards. I did consider a magnetic version of this, and maybe I will at some point, but this connector works fine. No loss in power or speed. Now, if you do want to use the official dock and you want more from the USB, I have tested a small hub in the USB port and it all works well. I run an Ethernet out of it and a mouse and a keyboard. There's no discernible lag and I still get the full 30 watt power. Just don't expect fast speeds for playing games off an SSD plugged in, as I haven't really tested the speeds of that yet, but I can imagine it might not be on par. I don't know. So to get that full 30 watt turbo from directly plugging it in, or if you're using a third party dock, you will most likely need a good way to power it. and You can't go wrong with a 100 watt charging plug. I use two in the studio, an old U-Green 100 watt plug and a newer 100 watt anchor version. Both output enough juice to secure that 30 watt turbo mode. And both are excellent. I'll link to both in the description below, but do remember to get yourself a decent cable to work with it. Again, I'll leave links down there. 12th is a controller. If you're using it docked or you just fancy something a bit more comfortable when undocked, you're going to need a controller to play on. So I've split this up into three types, cheap, pricey, and they're even more expensive. For cheap, you get yourself an Xbox controller, plenty of colors, works well with Windows, and of course, they're pretty cheap. As for pricey, this is what I went for. This is the Elite 2 Core. You can grab this for around hundred pounds, but for me, it's a little bit more as I've got the black rear paddles and a black regular D-pad all off Amazon as an extra. And as for too much, you could consider the Raikiki from ROG. It has all the bells and whistles and such as like a little mini screen at the top, but it comes in at nearly 150 pounds, but I'd suggest reading reviews first, just in case. Another one for those who like to dock, and that's a keyboard and mouse. For me, my main keyboard while gaming on the Ally is this, the budget CIY keyboard. It does the job and I've got big plans to modify it. So it cost me 40 pounds and spending that much on a keyboard that is already stacked is perfect. As for a mouse, this is a little bit more specific than a choice of keyboard as before. I wanted a mouse that I could take out with me just in case. So I needed one that did 2.4G and Bluetooth. 2.4 for when I'm docked and Bluetooth if I ever need to go out and about. So I ended up with this, the excellent Aerox 3 from SteelSeries. It has everything you need, it looks good, a nice RGB, nice clicks, loads of connections and decent software. My only gripe is that on the buttons on the side are a little bit tricky to press, but that's literally it. If you want something even smaller and not fussed about RGB, then the Logitech Pebble is a good shout, it's tiny. But what if you wanted something to travel with a keyboard in your bag with no room? You may want something smaller than a regular keyboard and mouse. This is where this bad boy comes in. I picked this up from Amazon, and the reason I've got this one in particular is threefold. One, it has USB-C charging. Two, it has an inbuilt mouse pad. And finally, personally for me, it has the UK layout, which believe it or not, is quite rare on Amazon. It's either US or the Mac layout. It connects via Bluetooth and it remembers two devices, the battery isn't recorded in the listing, but all it does is say is that standby lasts for 200 days, which will do me. So having said that, it lasted me for a while of regular use, and I've only charged it up once the day I got it. The beauty of this is it folds up to the size of a couple of centimeters thick. It feels solid, and for the size gives you a decent typing experience. The mouse pad is a bonus and works well enough for simpler navigation. So it cost me £30, and I think if you need to consider it whether actually need is before buying it, because there's a few things that may put you off such as the buttons around the folds are of different sizes. Not really an issue as it is a small keyboard with folds, it just takes some time to getting used to. And also it doesn't really stay flat when unfolded, it's a bit wobbly. But 
It's a travel keyboard and for taking it out for use when needed it's fine, just don't game on it really. If you want a quality small cable, I've had in the past the Logitech A400. This is a great compact keyboard but obviously doesn't go as small as this one. Next up is something I've relied on a lot recently and I've been traveling around and it's this travel bag. The one I've been using is for the Steam Deck and it fits the Ally perfectly. It's called the Arcos from TomTok who make a bunch of really good quality bags and cases for all types of gadgets and the quality of this one is no different. It's superbly made with a self-styled W-style interior foam protecting the Ally and the thumbsticks. There's also enough room to take away a charger, a few cables, power bank, your phone and other items that you may need. It's a decent size and has an attached carry handle and a shoulder strap. It has a weatherproof exterior and it's all the really nice foam inside. It's well worth a look at if you plan on a trip away and need something to carry your ally and other bits in. So what about thumbstick grips? So this particular one comes in a pack of 20, which includes 10 black, eight white and two blue. Then the ring on the black and white one come in a few colors. I went for white with a black ring. These ones actually glow in the dark and look good, plus the stick makes it more grippy and more comfortable and the fit is spot on. Now finally it's these, a set of silicone thumbstick protectors. It's an acquired taste, I appreciate that, but they do prevent wear on the inside of your thumbstick. I have them on every single controller I own and although they do help, they do feel a bit of friction when turning, so completely understand it's not for you. But for £7 for a set of 10, it isn't going to break the bank if you decide you don't like them. So there we go, then there's 19 accessories for the ROG Ally, but there is one more I want to give an honourable mention to. It's an upgrade to the 512GB SSD that you have installed. You can get an upgrade to 1TB or even 2TB for relatively little money and install it yourself. Apparently it's pretty easy to do, and ROG linked to how to do it on their website. I may do it at some point, especially as I fill up mine with AAA titles, but for me, this is a perfect for a rainy day. 512 gigabytes really isn't enough, is it? So there we have it then. If you have any more ideas for accessories for the Ally, pop them in the description below so people know what was a good one to get. And I hope you found this list helpful. Is there a bag that you found fits perfect? A case, a cable, anything? Let me know down in the comments below. So that's everything then. Please like, please subscribe. Until the next video, bye-bye.